Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. We didn't make it, Floyd. It's 12.02. Don't take it so hard, boys. But, Kate, it's the first time in 20 years that it appeared like we was going to get the morning meal here in the morning. You, you'll make it one of these times. Hot diggity. That sure would be a red letter day, wouldn't it, Charlie? I hope to tell you it would. <laughs> now, Floyd, uh, could, could I look at the morning mail this afternoon before it gets to be evening? Oh, sure. Here you are. One postcard addressed to you. Mr. Bedlow. Don't tell me we're going to have to put up with that rat Bedlow again. Well, he'll have another scheme for closing down the cannonball for sure. Says he's bringing his son with him. I wonder what Mr. Bedlow's son is like. Junior! Yes, Dad? Stop dilly-dallying in that stupid station. You might inadvertently strike up an acquaintance with one of those stupid country hicks. Well, as a matter of fact, one of the natives, a friendly little old lady, did smile and try to say hello to me just a moment ago. Really? What did you do? I glared at her until her face turned crimson red and she was humiliated into turning away from me. Good boy. Ah, <laughs> uh, isn't that typical? A stupid hoodoo cannonball is already several hours late arriving at this stupid station. <laughs> well, wasn't that the sound of its stupid whistle, Dad? Yes, it was. What a more unpleasant sound I've yet to hear. You hate that train worse than anything in this world, don't you, Dad? I detest it. Even more than mother? Yes, even more than your mother. Boy, I'd hate to be that train. Smart boy. Come on, son. Let's climb aboard. Get out to that place I've been telling you about. The Shady Rest Hotel? Right. That Victorian mass of potential kindling wood. Right. That remotely located eyesore which defaces the scenery along the right-of-way of your railroad. Right. That antiquated two-bit hostelry which houses Kate Bradley and her brood, otherwise known as the enemy. <laughs> that ridiculous batten board. Oh, hold fashion. it, son. Hold it. Save some of that pernicious eloquence for a time you can use it on a defeated foe. Oh, right you are, Dad, as usual. Smart boy. <laughs> and it looks pretty, but when you give it a good look, it's nothing. Don't you ever forget it. See in life, my boy, not what's there, but what you want to see. <laughs> Dad, you are the greatest. Thank you, sir. You're probably the most ruthless man since Ivan the Terrible. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm always in there pitching. I bet you are, and I can't wait to see you tear into this Kate Bradley and the other rubes around here. Now, oh, hold on, son, hold on. That isn't the way I operate. What? Oh, now look, Dad, you said I'd see you in action, that you'd chop up these people once and for all. You said you'd bring them to their knees and make them suffer. You promised me this trip was gonna be fun. <laughs> it will be, my boy. It will be. 
suggest that you have to learn uh, some of the facts of life first. Great. It's about time. Not that kind. I want you to be a success. I'm putting into practice all those devious and unscrupulous tactics I taught you. Well, I've already put some of them into practice, Dad. Remember, I was the most hated boy in my whole college. Well, that's kid stuff. Minor league. Now you're ready to tackle the wonderful world of adults. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't wait to start. Well, be patient, my boy. And follow my example. In life, do anything to win. Plead, crawl, try, or lie. But don't actually ever cheat anybody. That is, unless you're sure you can get away with it. I know what you mean, Dad. Even in the game of golf, I'd rather play with a sore loser than a good winner any day. Save yourself years of trouble and don't waste time being a nice guy. Start out mean. It's a big shortcut. Oh, Dad, that's <laughs> great advice. What's your plan of attack, Dad? The new Homer Bedlow. Oh, not the old, mean railroad executive, but Homer Bedlow, the loving father and friend. <laughs> That'll get her. <laughs> Beautiful, Dad. Beautiful. Thank you, son. I've given this scheme a lot of thought, and I'm rather proud of it. I'm going to hit Kate Bradley with so many paternal platitudes she thinks she met the father of the year. <laughs> Dad. What is it, son? May I say that I'm proud to be your son? Sure, <laughs> son. Say it. Go ahead, say it. I am, sir. I'm proud. Oh, you're a chip off the old black boy. You're all right, son. You're all right. <laughs> Here we are, son, at the Shady West, the Magnolia and its stronghold of the enemy. Go get him, Dad. I will, I promise you, son. I'll soften him up, and then you can have a little fun yourself. Oh, great, Dad. You're all heart. Heart? Oh, that's a good one. That's a gem. That's a genuine witticism, my boy. <laughs> That only means one thing, double trouble in two pair of pants. Don't worry, Kate. I've handled bed low before and I can do it again. He's bringing his son along just gives me a bigger challenge. Thanks, champ. Don't mention it, Kate. That's what I'm here for is to look after you and the girls. Mom, did you say Mr. Bedlow's on his way up the hill? And his son. Oh, is he cute? Oh. Well, he looks like he's about 24 in the college type. Oh, looks like maybe having Mr. Bedlow here this time could present an entirely different... I said he looks like the college type. Also, he looks just like his father. You can't be serious. Sorry, chum, but that's the hair-raising truth. Bedlow's son is a genuine juvenile duplication of his hawk-faced, grumpy, mean old father. Is that a fact? <laughs> I'll go along with everything you say about me, young lady. But I don't think it applies to my son here. Most people say he favors his mother. Bless her dear, sweet, and gentle heart. Gee, Mr. Bedlow, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were standing there. Obviously. <laughs> now, Mrs. Bradley and Mr. Carson and you, young Bradley sisters, allow me to present my son, Homer Bedlow, Jr. Oh, hi. Oh, it's good to be back. It's been a long time. Not long enough for us, Bedlow. That's right, Uncle Joe. Well, I don't blame you folks. But please, not in front of my son. He's extremely sensitive. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, we got nothing against your son, Mr. Bedlow. That's right. No hard feelings, son. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your what? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, your son may have a heart. But if you have one, we haven't seen it yet. Well, I had that coming, Mrs. Bradley. That and much more. My past performance in your lovely community obviates the necessity for any politeness on your part. Aim your bitterest insults at me. I stand before you, ready to accept them and deserved and naked humiliation. Careful, Bedlow. This is a decent and respectable hotel. Well, that's only a figure of speech, Mr. Carson. Uh, Mr. Bedlow, are you saying that um, you're through trying to scrap the cannonball and shut down this hotel and that you're a changed man who... Wants to repent for what he's done? Yes, ma'am. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. I don't believe a cotton-picking word of it. You can't talk to a bedlow that way. No, no, no. Hold on, son. Set family pride and filial devotion aside. I have to be honest with you. In my past visits to the Victorian tabernacle of friendly seclusion, 
I've uh, been a bit of a stinker. No, Dad, not you. I can't believe it. Dad. Why? 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 Vengeance, my boy. Anger, frustration, and humiliation. That's why those feelings known only to the vanquished have lodged themselves in my throat like a massive inflammation. And I had to return here to spit them all out. Not in this lobby, you don't, Bedlow. <laughs> don't you forget it. Joe, Mr. Bedlow's not going to do what you think. Oh, you're dang right he ain't, not as long as I'm here. Else he'll get thrown out the front door. Mrs. Bradley, I stand before you, not as the pragmatic vice president of the CNFW Railroad, but as a parent, just like yourself, trying to do what is right for his offspring. Mr. Petlow, for the first time, we see eye to eye about something. Oh, Mrs. Bradley Jr. has spent most of his life with me, and I brought him down here in the hope that he might fall under the warm and soft influence of you and your charming daughters. It's time he was exposed to the opposite sex. That does it, Bedlow. <laughs> Out you go. Control, control yourself. What's the matter with you, Kate? He's the one that ought to learn to control himself. I knew you were mean, Bedlow. I never realized until now that you're vulgar, too. Joe, please be quiet. You just don't understand Mr. Bedlow's language. The heck I don't. You ought to be ashamed of yourself in front of women and your own son. Mr. Bedlow, here are the keys to adjoining rooms. Why don't you and your son go on up and we'll talk about this later? Thank you, Mrs. Bradley. That's an excellent idea. Girls, will you show them to their rooms? Supper will be in about an hour, Mr. Bedlow. Well, thank you, Mrs. Bradley. That'll just give us time for a bath. And while you're in there, wash your mouth out with soap, Bedlow. <laughs> hey, okay, Kate. This is your hotel. You can run it the way you like. But I'm warning you, if you let people talk like that, the place is going to get a bad name. Look at you. Stop saying that. It sounds silly. Mr. Bedlow may be mean, but he's an educated man who knows how to use the language. Yeah, he sure does. Well, he even used a couple of words that even I don't know. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice indeed. Thank you, Mr. Bedlow. Well, how's your room, son? Built. Really built. Your room's built? What's that mean? Uh, my room? Oh, no, Dad, I had my mind on something else. Oh, I see. At your age, you find the Bradley girls attractive. Is that it? They are dull. Well, forget it. They're miserable daughters of a miserable woman. That's what they are. You bet they are. Dolls? Did I, did I say dolls? No, sir. Not when you take a good, close look. Dogs is what they are. Genuine, unpedigreed mutts. Beautifully stated, my boy. Your semantics are sound. They make your old dad proud. How do you think we're doing with Mrs. Bradley, Dad? Well, better than I hoped for. She started lapping up that doting father gimmick like a cat with a saucer of cream. What makes genius, Dad? You, my boy, that's what's next, the clincher. I leave and you stay. Me? What do you mean? Me stay here by myself? What for? Well, don't you see? With me gone, Kate Bradley and a brood will be thoroughly disarmed. Well, what can I do here on my own? Snoop around, get the lay of the land, worm your way into the hearts of these yokels, find their Achilles heel. Okay, Dad, I'll give you the old college try. With your reputation as the meanest Yale graduate in human memory, it's good enough for me. Dad, you inspire me with confidence. You make me feel like I'm even more than a son to you. My boy, if a father can't inspire his own flesh and blood with a sense of purpose and dedication, I ask you, what good is he? Nothing, Dad. A big, fat nothing. And you are the greatest. An absolute genius. Oh, knock it off, boy. I'm not a genius. Brilliant, perhaps but not yet a genius. <laughs> you know, I always figured Mr. Bedlow was too mean to have a son. Oh, Bedlow's a changed man. I reckon spending so much time here with decent folks has finally rubbed off on him. Yeah, maybe so. Now all we gotta do is straighten out that cussing problem of his and he'll be perfect. <laughs> you all a fond farewell until we meet again. Bless you, goodbye, and buena suerte. There he goes, cussing again. <laughs> oh, Joe, buena suerte means good luck in Spanish. Is Bedlow Spanish? No, I don't think so. Need I say more? <laughs> Things won't be the same without you, Dad. You're doing fine, my boy. 
You've trained for this for months. It's time you spread your wings and swoop down on a few pigeons. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little scared. Well, that's only natural. The first time I outsmarted and crushed an opponent, I felt the same way. When it was all over, I had tears in my eyes. From crying? Not you, Dad. From laughing? And of course not me. Oh, that's good. I'm relieved. Now I'll be so happy back at the office, knowing that you're here plotting to destroy this train and the Bradley clan every waking moment. Dad, even when I sleep, I dream me. That's my boy. <laughs> so long, Dad. Goodbye, son. And remember the medal creed, Humanum est errare semper paratus. Right. To err is human, so always take advantage of it. Bye, <laughs> Dad. Bye, bye, Dad. My dad is leaving. <laughs> carries about everything from newborn babies to hot lunches for salesmen. I guess at one time or another, Charlie and Floyd's turned that train into just about everything under the sun. <laughs> sort of a traveling restaurant, hospital, and come what may without a license, you might say. Yeah, the folks around here don't care much for red tape. Them uh, legal technicalities. Is that a fact? <laughs> interesting, Mr. Carson. Extremely interesting. Yeah, I guess it is if you say so, Junior. I still don't think writing a book about things around here is going to make you any money. Well, there's more life than money, Mr. Carson. There's the gratification one feels when one accomplishes something important. I'd call it a feeling of cerebral passion. Now, you're going to have to cut that kind of talk out, son. <laughs> what kind of talk? What do you mean? You've been hanging around with that old man of yours too long. <laughs> yes, but... Now, you take my advice and forget about that kind of language. There ain't a publisher in the country who'll put any of them words in print, believe me. Really, Mr. Carson, there's nothing wrong with... Now, don't try to sell me on your city ways. If you're going to put things like that in writing, put them down so decent people can read them. <laughs> you know, as a new writer, starting on his first book, you're pathetic. <laughs> you haven't had a visit from anyone with the ICC that you can remember? Well, not that we can recall. Right, Floyd? That's right. Matter of fact, I can't even uh, recall what ICC means. <laughs> Those initials stand for Interstate Commerce Commission. That's the federal agency which controls the licensing of commercial vehicles. Is that a fact? <laughs> Boy, you two are incredibly naive. How's that, son? Uh, what I mean to say is that you're incredibly neat and precise. Where you run this train. You ought to see how nice our uniforms look when it ain't a fishing day. You mean you're going to stop this train and go fishing? Yep. We're almost to Morgan Creek Trestle. We'll be wetting the line in five minutes. Stop a train to go fishing? Why? I don't get it. Because it's fun. Fun? You gotta be kidding. Ain't you never fished, son? Of course not. And you're about to sample one of the great joys of life, Junior. Fishing's good for the soul. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> hey, I got a bite. Let him take it, Junior. Don't rush him. Hook him, son. I got him. Good boy. Bring him aboard. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> This is fun. I hope to tell you it is. What would I do with them? Throw him back in. Well, why should I do that? So you can come back again with us tomorrow and catch him again. <laughs> Hi, Junior. Come on and do the hop with us. No, oh, thanks. I don't dance. Oh, come on, Junior. It's fun. Come on, do the hop. It's the greatest. Oh, look, this is ridiculous. I mean, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> this is fun. Oh. Isn't it, though? Morning, Junior. 
morning, Mrs. Bradley. How you getting along? Pretty good, thanks. Uh, could I talk to you about something, please? Well, well, sure you can. What's on your mind? It's something you're not going to like to hear. In fact, I think you're going to hate it. Well, let me decide for myself, huh? I've been lying to you. Why, Junior, I'm surprised at you. What lies have you been telling? So many, I hardly know where to begin. And my dad, he's been lying to you, too. Well, that doesn't uh, surprise me in the least. He's, he's old and set in his lying ways, but there's hope for you, Junior. Won't tell me about it? My dad and I came here to destroy that stupid train. I mean the cannonball. And this hotel and everybody in this stupid valley. I mean valley. You'll have to excuse me. I'm having quite a struggle telling you about this. I mean you are. But just don't be upset. Everything's going to be fine. I'm not used to the sickening emotion that's overwhelming me. What emotion is that? I think it's called honesty. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that, that can be a tough one to handle, <laughs> depending on the way you think. But the point is, Mrs. Bradley, you and your daughters and Uncle Joe and Charlie and Floyd have all been so kind to me, and the stupid part about it is none of you seem to want anything from me at all. That's right, we don't. But why? I don't get it. You're all so nice and friendly and kind, and for no darn stupid reason at all. But do we have to have a reason? I know. You're all sick. That's it, isn't it? You've got some kind of a community neurosis. That's it, isn't it? No, it isn't. As a matter of fact, we all feel fine. You do? Boy, I'm really confused. <laughs> well, why don't you stop trying to understand it and just enjoy it? That's what we all do around here. That's what I've discovered. You know, a fellow could get used to a life like this. Well, of course he could. And you're just a fellow. Thanks, Mrs. Bradley. Thank you very much. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shoot a wire to my dad and tell him I found the answer to his problem. I'm going to get him here right away so he can straighten himself out, too. <laughs> Son, tell them how we pulled it off. Tell them how you're going to bring them to their knees in front of your father as he enjoys this moment of supreme retribution. Bedlow, you've been back ten seconds and you're starting up again. Now you watch your language and I ain't kidding. <laughs> okay, son, what's the news? What's your answer for settling this problem once and for all? By not pretending to be nice anymore. Naturally, naturally, there's no use for pretense now. And the answer? Honesty, Dad. Plain, simple, undisguised honesty and truth. Beautiful, son. Absolutely beautiful. We'll hit these yokels with honesty and truth, and then we'll close down the cannonball in this hotel, and the stupid people in this valley will... What? <laughs> did you say what I thought you said? Yes, sir, I did. No, it can't be. They've ruined you. That's what they want. No, Dad, they've given me a new look at life, an honest one, and I like it. Oh, stop talking like that. It's disgusting. Dad! It can happen to you, too. Will you shut up, you fiends? You brainwash this poor boy. I'm taking you back to city right now. No, sir, I don't want to go. You're going to have to see a psychiatrist first thing in the morning. I don't like her. I hate her. I'll never want to see that woman again. Well, you're going to go, and that's that. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Bradley. Goodbye, Uncle Joe. Goodbye, Goodbye girls. Junior. We sure will miss you. We Bye -bye. will, Junior. Hurry back, dear. You bet I will. Not in your life. Now stop doing that, you fool. You look like a nice guy. It's repulsive. <laughs> Poor Junior. He had to have Mr. Bedlow for a father. I don't think Bedlow will ever let that boy come back here again. Oh, I wouldn't worry, Uncle Joe. That nice boy will be back, I'm sure of it. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care if we never see either one of the two of them again. 
Them's two of the most foul-mouthed men I've ever met in my life. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.